Synopsis. It belongs to this, this awesome little device called the Ardu Boy, and it's very, very tiny and sleek, uh, but it is an awesome Adreno-based game console. Yep, and it's tiny on the RAMs yeah. and tiny yeah. on the yeah. storage. Yes, it is. This is like your your modern OG Game Boy. Yeah, but it's not more like the size of a keychain. Yeah, you can fit it in your wallet. It if you're the yeah. here. And it's pretty tough, man. It's built like a brick. Yeah, and this thing's on. And, you know, the battery lasts for freaking ever. This is the first time I've ever actually, I must have left it on, like, for two weeks. And uh, <laughs> it, that's the first time I've ever had it be dead. Oh, ever. Okay, so, but you were about to ask Yuri. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about our new venture. What's the uh, basic premise? You have to remember, not, I'm not native English, so you have to explain oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, so what's, uh, what is our new venture about? Yeah, it's an, an RPG. We wanted to do, well, Siegfried made a demo of an RPG, a small one, but it bricked everybody's uh, audio boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with because, that. Because it, uh, you ran out of uh, RAM quite quickly. And then it was un you were unable to reboot it. So <laughs> I went to him and I said, I want to turn this into a full game. Because <laughs> as a full game, we can really crash the systems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the thing is, he went all wrong using uh, memory space. Uh, and I had already found some little tricks to come uh, had a better way to do that. Okay, so you said that, that Siegfried who was doing the initial development on it? The demos? Sorry, I didn't understand the question. <laughs> I'm sorry, so the, the person who first started writing the game, that was Siegfried? Yeah, okay. he's from Belgium too. All right, so he at that time was not doing it as what we call a procedurally generated adventure. He was doing a, an actual fixed memory adventure? Yes, and... We are doing the same thing right now for this game. Right. So this is not a procedurally generated adventure. It's everything is a fixed one. Now that does get to be a problem with as little RAM as you are working with. Yeah. yeah. So it, Travis, how much just, RAM is in that? I just don't know what's on my hand. Two K. Two K. Two K. Yeah. Literally a Timex Sinclair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, because you're looking uh, at the wrong way at this. <laughs> ah. Because we actually do not need any RAM at all. We're uh, reading everything out of the program space. So you're actually playing out of the program space? Yep. Oh, well that's very interesting. And that's possible because the Arduino chip is fast enough to just push right. everything from out of memory straight to the that's screen, awesome. gotcha. play music. And read our buttons at the same time. Yeah, so it really expands the capability of what you can do. Well, yeah, for sure. That's what really surprised me. The fact, and you said just said play music. The fact you put two <laughs> songs on that <laughs> as well insane. was just it's, it's like wait a minute. I mean, again, knowing the, the again the initial RAM limitations of uh, the uh, the Ardu Ardu Boy, um, it really was amazing that you had to play music. I'm thinking that had to be really tricky. I was wondering how you had done that, so that explains that. 
Yeah, yeah. So before, before, a little before the show, I was kind of talking about Larry. Some of the best like OG Game Boy games. From okay, my, explain my OG game. before you say that. original gangster. But <laughs> okay, but old school. Old school. Geek. Old yeah. school. Yeah. But uh, some of the some of the old black and white games. Some of the great greatest experiences I ever had on that console were some of the the action adventure games they had. You know, your Final Fantasy. Right. Final Fantasy. Like that was a legend. The Legends. Legends. Though. Yeah. The uh, you know. Adve- Final Fantasy Adventure series. Um, it, this this looks very much akin to that kind of style. You got it looks like you have turn based battles uh, uh, as well. But that, I, I again for for a pretty very basic system, the 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 graphics look pretty cool. Well, uh, that's you know one of the things I I mean that's what I was talking about when I was so we recently did an episode uh, where we just talked about our favorite Game Boy games, and uh, I'm doing this for. Yeah, no, you can do it for his back. And, and, and one of the things I talked about is that a lot of the handhelds at the time, they tried to be really bold and, and do a color screen and stuff like that, but there was a real efficiency problem. But the Game Boy original, even though it was just black and white and, you know, dots, it ended up being so clear that it was very comfortable to play, even though you were missing color and some of the other things, but it didn't really matter. The clarity was there, and so you still very much enjoyed the game, and that's kind of what I'm seeing from um, what I, what's available on the Kickstarter page is that you know black and white clarity. I, I know what things In, are. Interesting sprites and right. background right. design. So that brings up the point, Yuri. Are you guys doing your own graphics design, or do you have somebody else do the actual character design? No, Sigrid is still uh, in charge of every pixel uh, on the screen. Okay. And see, now that brings up the, so, again, some of your previous games, all of them, graphically, again, considering the space you're working in, really, he does an amazing job with the limited amount of graphics capability on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was the first thing I wanted to make uh, outstanding with Team AOG, is to have graphics in such a small ga- uh, game space and one bit screen. And still have graphics that look like whoa! How is this even possible? So I, I managed to attract some people at uh, who have been very great at pixel art design in one bit. Yeah, it's... Cast, Pix- Cast Pixel is one of them. She's a Greek uh, pixel artist. So oh, I'm going. Go yeah. What was that name again? Cast Pixel. She's on Twitter. She has like twelve thousand followers. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so kind of talking about we had the this art adventure game. You guys have a mm-hmm. Kickstarter going currently. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. That's been that so, Yeah. Um, so <laughs> let me fund it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you guys are offering the art adventure game. The cool thing was is uh, for the earlier backers and things they had uh, limited edition Artie Boys that came in special edition gold and black which looked. Super slick. Rob's all um, excited because he got one. So, and, and they're, they're at a great cost. Did you kind of partner up with the hardware producer to say, hey, you know, we'd like to, re- to release this, you know, kind of as an official release? Or is this something you went to, like, a third party to get distributed? Well, I know Kevin from the start, uh, when he started with his Kickstarter, or the boy, two years ago. Okay. I talked to him and I said, we were already making games for... Arduino devices, other Arduino devices like Shields and TV Out, and suddenly this thing came out of on Kickstarter, and I just mailed him like, I want to make games for this device too. Are you interested? And then we started talking, and we actually made the very first game. He then put on the Audio Boy to send out to every backer. That was a Blob Attack. Oh, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So yeah, I got, got quite a history. Uh, with the system itself as well, so it, this is a... Uh, well, I, yeah, yes. I, I, you know, in general, I mean, there's... Yeah, well, I've been in, involved with, together with other people on the library for the Boy, and I made, at some point, I made my own library, and then it came back together with the one from Kevin. Uh, and now, uh, with somebody from Sweden, we made our four-channel chiptune uh, player. That's insane. Just getting it on there. Tom was saying it's all about the compression. Is that true? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
the thing so I wanted to do a special edition just for fun because I was like I want to do something special for this game or adventure and Kevin told me yes we can but they have to be paid in front because we cannot do for 1000 units uh, something special the cost will be too high that's why we started the Kickstarter together right because this is the first thing you, you normally don't kickstart your games it was uh, again it was interesting to see you actually kickstart something and again, throw yeah. it, and the ability to get the special uh, Ar Ardu Boy as well as the even the standard Ardu Boy for that price is amazing. Um, oh yeah, I mean it's it's a great way to get right. it. if You don't have so it. the the Kickstarter's coming to an end. They've blown away their 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 There's goals. Seventeen days left. Yeah, well, it's still, but they blown uh, they've blown away the goals. I mean, yeah. it's it's you guys are like what uh, ten times the amount you asked for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Almost, okay. almost ten times the amount they asked for, um, and all the uh, all the the premium packages are gone, which kind of broke my little heart. But if you guys don't right. already own, and I'm just gonna put. This I up told right you now. guys, like I know you. Yeah. When I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I normally I don't was, jump in yeah. right away, though. But but, <laughs> but 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 Rob, I, seriously, I looked at it like the next day, and, and it was gone. It was yeah. gone. Yeah. They were already gone. Yeah. It was pretty razor thin there. Yeah, I, I probably looked within the week and they were already gone. But so there was like eight left when I ordered mine. I was like, oh, I better get this done. Yeah. So uh, again, the other part of the deal is that you guys have evidently made with the uh, the Iron Boy manufacturers is the price is amazing. If uh, if you guys haven't kickstart jumped in on the Kickstarter yet. You really should. Yeah, right, it's a good way. To, and again, it's a good introduction to the system. I mean, you, it looks like you're getting a really cool game with it. Oh, amazing! You get the man, hardware. Yeah. I mean, the, the hard, It's a cool piece of kit. Like, it's. I mean, sometimes symbol is good. You can take it with you legitimately anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Like, like Rob was saying, like I'm holding it right now, and this is really surprisingly tough and just like hard. You like, yeah, I'd be really good. impressed if you actually broke it. You'd have to like try to break this damn thing. Yeah, it's a it's a cool, very cool piece of kit. Like, yeah. yeah, the amount you pack into that package is is pretty. And cool. just even the buttons, the quality oh, of these uh, buttons. Is and it was funny when, when Rob first got deal. this. That was one of the things he talked about was the quality of the controller on this. Because Which, I was really expecting like, oh, I'll be. The capacity won't be that great, but I was like, seriously, the feel on these is really great. Because you're using turn-based, I'm sorry, Yuri, because you're using turn-based combat, you know, yeah. did, uh, again, the controller on this particular unit is extremely good. I imagine that helps, I mean, even in turn-based combat, just be able to scroll through the menus and pick what you want without yeah, overshooting I mean, and goofing yeah, around. Yeah, I imagine that helped a lot. Twitch your yeah. stuff, but... Um, the game lends itself well to that. You can hook that up to your PC and use it as a uh, controller too. Just oh. as a uh, you're feeling like a nut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, did, so what? What was your question? Oh, no, my my question is so the, the control scheme on it for the game because it, your 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 Kickstarter really doesn't go through the control scheme much. Pretty much oh, just yeah. a straightforward. That's your RPG. Yeah, yeah, I know it's an RPG. I'm just asking. Yeah, well, you will be he may have done something in different. the world, and then you go into a battle because you set a amount of footsteps, and then you go into a battle, and then you have a menu, and clicking through the menu will be very natural. You know, it's it's fixed. Um, so, you know, the, what do you expect of like the replayability? You know, it's is there. Or is it like an RPG? But it's not, if it's not a digital base, it's probably fixed. So. Yeah. yeah. So this, maybe, this, uh, maybe this, the better this. question is, what is kind of the average, like an average person, person for hours on, on, on this game? Uh, we're aiming above two, two, three hours, if you know every place on the map. Yeah, so... Uh, which, which probably works out pretty good if you're playing this, like, in between stuff because you just yeah. got it with you like you like you would like a, a, a at the airport at the airport or something great like bathroom that, game you know. <laughs> yeah, right. but, yeah bathroom game <laughs> <laughs> do you love uh, it actually you can probably disinfect it pretty easily so <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah you spray probably isn't the rest just spray it down by the way our our uh, airport's a horror show like they are in the u.s Are, are, the, are they? Are you saying yeah. Are, is, is are, are the airports over there as bad as they are in the U.S.? In Belgium? Yeah. Remember we, we had a bomb attack last yeah, year? Yeah, oh, yes. they are now. 
<laughs> or, uh, so, or the airport there is, is bad. We only have <laughs> one, <laughs> one <laughs> airport and two smaller ones or three smaller ones, but yeah, it's the same thing. You have to wait for flights and then. Yeah. Take your shoes off. Yeah. <laughs> you so, gotta do that to go to the courthouse now. Do you really? Yeah. No. Uh, okay, Yuri. Um, yeah. So you've got the two premium packages, the one with the plushie and the custom Ardu Boy. The one where you get the custom Ardu Boy, and then you've got the standard package, which is just the regular old white Ardu Boy with the program preloaded. Uh -huh. yeah. I, I take it because you've uh, kind of squashed this goal that shipping will probably be pretty much right on schedule with what you guys were thinking? It should be. But the major problem won't be having it out in time, it's more like what will be happening with the mail thing because it's shipping out from around after New Year and may, mostly mail doesn't go very fast in that period. Oh, yeah. So the game yeah. will be finished in time, that won't be the problem. Hardware too because it's actually the same. Uh, the same as the white one, just another color. Right. Object molds are being just replaced by another color. So. So the uh, the Ardu Boy is kind of it's a really great like hobbyist system to kind of play around with. There's something to be said with the limited space because that way you can kind of program relatively easily. It's kind of a fun thing to kind of play around with. There's lots of user forums out there um, and communities um, with the other users. Um, before working on the Ardu Boy, were there other game systems or did you make other games before this or was this something you started with this hardware? Well, to be honest, I'm an architect, so I don't know anything about programming. Yeah. When I started. <laughs> uh, so then I, I went for an IT job and taught myself everything I needed to know. And I found a course about Arduino, followed it, and started learning myself. And that's how I wanted to make games. And I thought this was the perfect opportunity to, to do to go into a new system because it was Arduino was quite new at the day and I started learning more about C C plus plus. And what I'm best at at this moment moment is squeezing everything into a tiny place. Uh, most of the functions are written by somebody else of our team and I try to make it smaller. Gotcha. That's what I'm good at. So now that brings up an interesting, another interesting point, uh, Yuri. You guys are actually going to have the code as open code on this so that other people can yep. look to see what tricks you've applied to this software to fit such a very large playing game into yep. a, such a small system. You want to tell us a little about that? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> You're dropping on and off. Sorry about that. Right. Yeah. Again, so for those, again, one more time who don't know, Yuri is in Belgium when we're speaking to him. So that's not, see, it's not standard to open source these, right? I have not seen well, any of them. Arduino stuff? So, yeah. No, yeah. It, it is standard? That's kind of Oh, yeah. I mean, it, I edit games on the Ardu Boy all the time so, to suit my crappy play style. <laughs> I was going to say you had your own custom graphics, but that's a whole other issue. Basically, uh, I think I need everything. some more lives here. <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah, no. Again, the great thing about the Arduino platform is it's it's very oriented towards hobbyists and people do really cool stuff. Uh, so there's a lot of communities out there kind of collaborate and share, um, and it's it's really cool to see what people are up to. Uh, and this, I think, the fact that this is going to be one of those projects that people kind of peek into the code or kind of expand or mod or things like that, I think is is really awesome. Well, again, especially considering how ambitious this project is and how much they've jammed into such a again a tiny unit physically and technologically technologically yeah. okay so um you said you're running the 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 pro out of the program memory area what do you have for on that i, I don't know the spec on that yeah well program is actually just the the, the ram you had you put a code in yeah the, so you have normal art normal art drio has 32 kilobytes, but because it's a Leonardo, it's only 28 and a half kilobytes. Okay. That's where you put everything in. <laughs> Still, much more powerful than an Atari 2600. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's yeah, what I'm kind of thinking. It's like basically like, 
burning you for like a, a Commodore 64 or something like that, you know, where you get a lot smaller space. Well, you know, and, and so that is something, and again, that, that your team here has established. So we're, uh, some of us here are very old school gamers. We came up, you know, with, the, okay. with some of the very first home computers. I mean, hence the reason I remember the old Timex Sinclair or the Sinclair systems and things like that. And before that, the ZX80 and before that, the uh, Cosmic Elf. You really had to use your memory and your program space wisely. Now, technically, we didn't have program space on that. You only had RAM. But, you know, you learned, you learned <coughs> to do some pretty clever things in some pretty small spaces. I think there's a beauty to, to being limited to what you can program in. You, you, you've got to be that's, a lot more elegant about your solutions. That's, that's, that's uh, what me, me, uh, triggered me in the first place is because it's so tiny. And actually, a lot of people are giving up because they think we, we can't do it, and that's what triggers me to keep continuing. <laughs> that is, uh, that is the best reason to do something like this, just to prove it can be done. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, lots to be said for the research list. And I, I do have to say, with with a simpler console, things like that, it's a lot easier and accessible for people to pick up and play. People who might not in be into these giant RPG experiences where you get lost in 80 million menus and you're kind of trying to manage all this crazy stuff that you can't figure out. You can just pick it up. You're like, okay, this you is my first time. Dragon Age, would you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I mean, there is something to be said about like. Uh, I like. You I, know, I, I, sometimes you don't mind a linear experience. Yeah, I. <laughs> I, I after I was trying to find some games for my wife to play, she really likes Luigi's Mansion. I was trying to find some other like adventure game style for her, and like I tried to get her on to some of the Legend of Zelda games, but it was like some of those are so obtuse you have to like explore around and find like the new items. Yeah, I was going. To, I started like uh, Ocarina of Time stuff like that. Uh, yeah. And so th again, sometimes you just need something really linear. She's like, you know, you need something to hold your hand, kind of move straight forward and you know exactly what you need to do rather than kind of you can explore if you want which i, I think this game has you can explore of. but there's a pile of woods or so you can't go in that section <laughs> <anymore>. <laughs> yeah so sometimes sometimes there's something to be said for simplicity in games and just having an experience that you know you're, you're not having too much convoluted then it's on the x now you can go through <laughs> you know so uh obviously this takes a lot of time but uh do you play uh are you playing any uh, any other games? Just uh, games you like or enjoy that you didn't write? <laughs> well, I have to be honest. I don't even play my own games. Hope you spare time, right? Yeah, I, I just create them. I try them out. I try to make them better. And then when it's finished, it's like, okay, I know how to finish the game. Somebody else plays it. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I, um, I have a Game Boy from when I was young. I played a lot on that. Uh, I have a PSP on which I emulate uh, the Game Boy because it has a better screen. Uh, I do have a uh, an Amiga 500. Yeah. Not from when I was young, but I just recently bought it. Good call. Uh, yeah. hey, what, what are you playing on your Amiga? This is an Amiga everything. group. Everything. Like everything. No, yeah. <laughs> like, everybody here is an Amiga, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody here is an Amiga. Yeah, literally, we all, we all cut our teeth. Again, I go way back, but we've all owned Amigas. We still, no, never mind. We still all own Amigas. Mine's in pieces. Yeah. I'm, I'm probably a bit older than you imagined it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm, yeah, we're, I'm old as dirt over here, so yeah, I'm, I'm betting you're a lot younger than, than, than me. So, but yeah, we go we go back a long way with this. Stunt car driver. <laughs> that's yeah. That's a really that's, that's not the most that's not a very popular game. That's what was more popular. Hey, what system did you start out on? Me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think the very first time I ever saw a console have, must have been Atari. Yeah. So. And then Commodore 64 was pretty in Europe, was pretty pretty big. Yeah. I do have now have a Spectrum ZX. Oh, nice. Did you, uh, you have one of the original ones or one of the uh, the, the new ones? One of the uh, the Kickstarter no, no, ones. The first one. You got one of the original 48. ones. Nice. Uh, and that's actually a quite good console uh, console for inspiration on sprites and stuff. Yeah, again, that goes back down to use, being able to program and use small amounts of memory. That's, again, so, sometimes I, 
And I understand that we make much more complex games nowadays, but sometimes it's nice to... I, I, so my my game style is GGB I look be remembers. I look for <laughs> games. I don't. I, it's really hard for me to make hundreds of hours to play a game. I just don't have that kind of blocks of time. So again, games like uh, you know like yours are are really good for me because again, two or three hours I can spend two to three hours on a game. You know, a weekend? No, I'm not going to get a weekend to play a game. Yeah, you boy is actually a. Uh it, it's a pretty crazy uh, platform as far as what you can find out there. It's kind of funny because uh, people try some pretty extreme stuff on it. I Actually, you know, it's kind of funny. I was going through your back catalog and I realized that uh, <coughs> one of the first games I loaded on was uh, Epic Crates of Mass Destruction. That was that's a cool first. one. Yeah, I like <laughs> that one. Uh, uh, that's the one, it's the one room shooter. Yeah. It's, uh, so there's like, another it's game like that was very shooter. similar to it and I said, hey, I'll... Uh, I'll go, I'll go with that, and uh, sure as heck, that was fun. You basically it's, just... like, it's like a game you can play for two, three minutes. You won't last any longer, so it's just like, <laughs> okay, I'm, I've, I'm dead. I want to try again. I want to try again. I want to try again. It's like uh, going over, over, over in small, small parts, and when you're done, you just put it aside. It's one of the few games on the Argo so, Boy that I've sworn at. Are you starting a community? Is there like a like a store or or do you download off your PC and sideload or how do you do Well the the thing is all all our games so far are open source, all the other games are mostly two, maybe one or two are not. And it's quite hard to, to set up a store because yeah, it's open source. People just throw stores around on the internet and you can literally just where's... see the code. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's what most people like about it is they can see the source, adapt some stuff, have more lives or whatever, or try another <coughs> sprite. And try again. And God both engage. <laughs> <laughs> put a drunken Larry's face in there. Didn't we do that with something? Yeah, yeah, he did actually make a, a, a drunken Larry 8 bit character. So you should, you, yeah. Yeah. Now you're going to have to do a, a one bit. I tried to lower one bit that you can put the, on the Ardu boy. Is it just a character that's passed out and doesn't move? <laughs> no, he's super delightful. Oh no, he loses his soul. <laughs> that's right. I can't believe you stole part of his shoe. No, I own part of Larry's soul. Get it right. <laughs> okay. You ready okay. Out? So, it, so, all right. So, so also for you, though, those who don't know, the reason we again we didn't do Bear Court yet is because we have kept poor Yuri up way past his bedtime. It's like what what, yeah. ti what time is it there, Yuri? No, it's uh, one a.m. So we, so Yuri has been really good and stayed up like really you know, fucking dedicated to come on the show and talk about this at one effing a.m. in the morning. So the Kickstarter is closing up. Uh, do you have any like immediate plans to kind of poke around more at Art Adventure? Do you have other kind of plans in your head you might kind of choke away at? What are, you, what are you looking to do kind of after this Kickstarter is done? When the Kickstarter is, Kickstarter is done, by that time the game or the venture should be completely finished, maybe one week later or something. And then we're, uh, we're about to create a pinball game. So, Ooh, oh, that's a good oh, idea. Oh, oh. Nice. That's actually a really good idea. Uh, uh, Gavin, Gavin, the guy who does most of the hard engine stuff, uh, was capable of making an, an engine that really feels like pinball. Uh, like the ball is actually doing gravity like movements, so, which so is quite cool. Yeah, I'm just, thinking, I'm just thinking about a physics <laughs> engine on that size of a, a system. That, I'm that's really, really cool. excited about that one. That's, that's that amazing. Like that idea. Yeah, we, we, all, we all just got a little, little uh, yeah, excited. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah. And the screen, the screen will look like you know those uh, Amiga pinball games, uh, pinball fantasy. I love it. Okay, okay. so screen. by that do you mean you're gonna do like the scrolling screen where you scroll up the board to get more yeah. board on? Oh, brilliant idea! Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, I was, I was, I was a little, I was wondering about that. So yeah, doing the scrolling screen that was again something very cool that was done on pinball fantasy. And I think, I really, I can't remember any game that did it before the Amiga, where they scrolled the screen up. I've, I've seen other ones that, like, will switch the screen, screen but right. not scroll. Not like that, that scrolling. Yeah. That scrolling yeah. made a nice feel. That's a, that's a really nice idea. I really liked Pinball Fantasy. Pinball Fantasy was a great Amazing, game. Yeah. Pinball Dreams was very disappointing. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. <laughs>
So uh, well, then the next another game we were working on is uh, we already created a, gen a dungeon game for uh, our, not our Ardu Boy but an Arduino Shield. It has like 256 levels. Uh, and if you go on our website, it's called Dungeon, and it has a technical page where a lot of the compression te techniques are explained already. We're using kind of the same technique, but even going deeper with it. And so we will be doing a dungeon again, the second one in a row, but this time it will be rogue. So it will have infinity levels. Right, so it's a procedurally g generated one. Yeah, like rogue. yeah, yeah. A excellent. Yeah, but, but, but with a fixed seat. With, uh, with a what? A fit, well, you can produce, or do you pronounce it in English, producial... Uh, but, yeah, you have a generator, and it needs a, uh, a seat, and normally it's random, but we will make a fixed one, so ah. it, it will be the same for everybody in progress. Gotcha. Nice! So that means, that also means you can save the game and continue, and everybody will be doing the that's same really path, cool. but there will be al alternatives. That's really that's really you don't die. Yeah, well, as you don't die. Which, well. All right, all right. So uh, I got one last question for you before I let you free. Okay. Um, as far as packaging go, one, one of the fun things about the Ardu Boy was, uh, of course, the uh, the ridiculous zip Ziploc bag it came in. <laughs> it came in the uh, nutrition is, packet, yeah, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Are you guys doing anything special with the packaging? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it won't come in a zip, uh, but now uh, the new order boys are shipping in a in a box with a sleeve. You put in a, uh, the box in, in the sleeve, and when you pull it out, you can open it up, and it has, uh, yeah, that's the sleeve. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So, uh, but for the special edition, it will be, and I, you, nobody knows yet, but it will be all black with gold stamp. Ooh. And it's looks like like well now you heard it here for those of you who get, got it on this Kickstart you just found out that it's uh, that it's going to be a, a special edition one as well. It looks slick. All right, so Rob, um, let's uh, Yuri. What do you guys have a normal website besides your your Twitter and your Facebook? Yes, uh, www.team. Uh, how do you say? It? Dash. A A R G. No, no, yeah, dash. Uh, A R G. Org. All right, great. We will have a link to that on our website so people can find you there. You can also find them at uh, Twitter. It's uh, team underscore ARG. Um, and uh, yeah. I, I wanted to do, they have a Facebook page too. Right? Some org. <laughs> yep, and it will be linked up in the show notes, of course. Right, we'll have links to all their pages there. We'll also have links to the Kickstarter. I don't know how many of the. Uh, the it's the, sub $50. The regular ones. It's, it's $39. Yeah. It's cheap. It's cheaper to buy their game and the Ardu Boy than it is to buy just the Ardu Boy. The Ardu Boy will cost you forty nine dollars. You yeah. can buy this for thirty nine dollars with their game. I jumped on it just before this, so I, you know. Yeah, so bad. so so right now I think the only one who has it yet is Tyler. I think everybody else here has already jumped yeah, on the whole table and jumped on. <laughs> yeah, literally the whole. Can I ask, can I ask one more question. Yeah. But do you drink beer? And if so, what's your favorite beer? My favorite beer? He's yeah. from Belgium. He drinks beer. I bet. Yeah, it, it has to be a Belgian beer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you're drinking. Well, tonight we're <laughs> tonight we're gonna be doing three sheets, uh, a wit. But uh, we drink everything. Yeah. yeah. I was actually I was recently in Brussels uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, I don't. I it's a, it was apparently a Scottish brewery, but they had a brew dog in uh, in Belgium, like downtown, and they they had some really really interesting beers. Some of them, I like Belgian styles, man. They're they're bubbly and usually pretty alcoholic yeah. and delicious. Well, yeah. well, and that's why we don't often have uh, international. Well, that's tests, true. So. so your favorite your favorite local beer. My favorite local normal, not so high yep. alcoholic beer is Hoogarden. Oh, Hoogarden. Oh yeah, very good. Mm. We actually have that. Not, yeah, okay. Something you can actually procure a nice, good, blonde. Yeah. Yep. Again, that's right up my alley, Joe. It only has not been on the show, the though. It's not been on Beer Court. No, we have not had it on Beer Court. We should have to get it on Beer Court. Yes, we will. All right. We should probably let him go. Yes. Um, yeah, and if you have another Belgian beer, go for Odeval. 
Audible. Audible. I haven't tried that. I haven't tried that one, so I have to look at it. All right, that's what we're going to look up now. All right, so uh, those of you who are going to the Midwest Gaming Classic and are interested in the Ardu Boy or Ardu Venture, it is highly expected that it should be delivered by the time the MGC starts. So there will both probably uh, be, there will definitely, definitely, there'll definitely, definitely smart boy there definitely that smart you can boys, get yeah. hands on with and play a game or two. I'll be switching it out probably uh, day by day. It'll, it holds one game at a time. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, what, uh, there's some menu systems. Memories. Yeah. Uh, and then the uh, special edition one should also be there by that time. And if it is, you'll see that there as well and be able to get hands on time right. with our new venture. Big special thanks to Yuri for coming on and for again for staying up so late. We really appreciate the, you coming on the show today. Yeah, really, thanks. really excited to have my hands on our adventure. Very much so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Bye. Get some sleep. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, time to uh, for us to do beer court now. Okay. Wait. Can we just talk about how oh, interesting yeah. this feels? We will. We After the it. introduction, yes, yes. Oh, beer core. For God's sake, let me get back to the control system. Get back <laughs> to the control system. Oh, here's what I'm jacked. So now, now we finally get to the beer core. This is interesting. Beer core. Okay, so tonight we, uh, we're trying something a little bit different. We've done stuff from Three Sheeps before. Uh, three Sheeps is out of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Well, Sheboygan. Sheboygan. It's crazy ass Sheboygan. It's, it's your boy Sheboygan. Okay, so I will um, say, like, as you were starting to say, this wow. label. Oh, yeah. This label, just touching this label. I know, I just... It's, it's weird. It's, it's like, textured. They it's, actually, like, it's like touching wallpaper. Yeah, it, it, it's actually, it's a textured label. It's, uh, <laughs> I just it's, had leftover wallpaper. It's, it's, like, it's very interesting. <laughs> it's a non-slip bottle. Ah. Yeah. Ah! Okay, you so, like the socks you get in the hospital? Yeah, I like the socks you get in the hospital. So, um, we in, in Wisconsin, it is the end of September, and it's been 90 degrees for the last, like, four That's or five true. days. I mean, it's been balls hot, literally. It's, it's been here. hotter here than it has been in Orlando, Florida. That does not surprise me at all. So, uh, so as one last blast for summer, we're going to do a, uh, a tart wheat beer with blackberries. It's a nitro tart wheat beer with blackberries. Um, this is a three ships, three sheep's nitro berry <laughs> beer. Sounds like you're three yeah, sheep's. So in I there wish I was. God, I wish that was. So a a a okay, so nitro berry invokes the spirit of a delicate blackberry sorbet. It's a little sweet, a little tart, with just a touch of cream and just the right amount of blackberry goodness. We started the lab with a secret blend of natural ingredients, add a slight pucker, then add the blackberries. Yeah, before we do what shockingly few black, I'm sorry, breweries in the country can, bottle it with nitrogen for a smooth, velvety mouth feel. So when they say nitro berry, they mean nitrogen bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell them you always liked them tart. I love them tart. Maybe the reason it's textured is because it tells you to pour it aggressively. Yeah, that's probably that could be it. So, it says it. so invert bottle, pour it aggressively, and be patient. So straight. It <laughs> yeah, it seriously shows it upside down. down. Yeah. yeah. And we're just going to shrink it out of Beer Court Chaos tonight yeah. on G2B. Like, no, it's, it's really like interesting. A bunch of rooms. It really is interesting that they textured the label. It's just a bunch of rooms. Oh. We're just going to drink it out of the no, bottle. No, fucking don't do that. What? Mm -mm. Oh. Not you. Oh. Mm. Ooh, guess what I don't like. They said it, there was sweetness. Yeah. Where's the sweetness? <laughs> yeah. Two turns. Now, it could be the fact we've been eating gummy bears for the entire show. Oh, man, pass me a gummy bear, will you? You know, maybe Thanks. it's because Thanks. we didn't aggressively oh. pour it into a, a glass. Uh, oh, it's a tart. Actually, mm -hmm. now that, that oh, to be said, it's tart. I was not expecting it to be that tart. No, maybe that's it. Maybe but that's it. But it's not that bad. It really is not. Like it does taste like blackberries and stuff. Yeah, the more I drink it, the more I'm liking. It. I guess that, you know that first initial. You're, I think I was well, expecting. You know, I had cleared my palate with a gummy bear, so. <laughs> oh, this got some sweetness going on, <laughs> and maybe I was expecting that sweetness to start with a little sweetness in there, and there's no but, sweetness. Yeah. It is. It's all tart. But also, how smooth it is. Like I said, with the nitrogen. It is because there's fun. no bite. That it's just like no. But then again, it's also very not very carbonated. Oh, I yeah, I would agree. But it's not supposed to like this style of beer normally. Oh, it. It actually isn't too bad. The more I drink it, the more I like it. And Rob, thing is, Rob, not so much. I don't you normally you like this kind of beer, but I really 
It's only 3.5%. It's only 3.5? Yeah. Holy shit. So you can drink this in the sun. Fruit juice that's been sitting out too long. Yeah. All right, wait. Let me just... So that's how they made it. Let me just slam some here. No. palate. Again, the more I drink it, the more I like it. It's not something I would order again. No, I probably wouldn't go on again, my I'm way not, to get They it. got like on tart flavors and stuff, but no, it's but definitely it, not but, bad. But if it was sitting in a cooler at a party, ice cold, ice cold, on a hot day, on a hot day. day. it's still like eighty some out right there right now, guys. So yeah, no, I could definitely, I could just drink more of this. It's just not something I've gone on my way for. So if you like like tart things and stuff, this is definitely up your alley. It's kind of become a thing lately. So tarts tarts and, and sours. Yeah, yeah, great. So we went from IPAs, tarts now we're going to go to tart beers. Tarts and sours. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're halfway between beer and wine. Yeah, yeah. Which? Oh. All right, verdict, guys. I'm running the other way. I'm going German all day long lately. <sighs> okay, well, not, 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 not our I worst beer that. ever shown, but... Oh, it's definitely not some, the worst. Have we had something so unanimously just meh before? Not often. No, not oh. often. I, this is just a, it, it's it's, it's a mad it's a mad beer. I mean, it's okay. It drinks the the being not very carbonated, not very alcoholic. It drinks really fast. You wouldn't mistake it for something else. No, God no, no. no. <laughs> you drink this beer, and you know you know it's a three shapes nitro berry. But you do get a nice Be berry flavor on it. Let it settle. Yeah, well that's what I'm saying. We aren't aggressively uh, so pouring it. it. So is there junk in the bottom of here? Well, maybe. I see some floors. There's junk in the trunk. There might uh, there might be stuff in the bottle. Is so that what? Kind of just taste put my thumb right? over it? And... Well, we have one more. We could get a glass and try. Yeah, we're gonna have to get a glass and try this. Um, we won't do it on we won't do it on the air, but I've got a feeling that this has stuff in it. Mm. And that yeah, uh, probably yeah, actual beer. Well, I just switched it. <laughs> Problem solved. Yeah, you know something. Let me try a little swishing. Bit of swishing. It. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, ah. Here, unlock the flavor. You know. Wait a minute. Actually, that did change mine a little bit. It yeah. Not mine. It's still tart. Maybe I'm just too used to the tart. Actually, now I got the tart. Oh, you weren't getting the tart before? That's actually went to a myth. Okay, yeah, so. From, I didn't really like it at all. It was really just yeah, water. You, wanna, you, you need the tart. Yeah, the no, I, mm, yeah, I guess you gotta shake it up. So off. are we gonna are you gonna reevaluate? One more time? I'm still. Yeah, I'll put it. Man. All right, unanimous. Yeah, it's a water. unanimous meh. All right, Judge Rob, pass verdict on this beer. Well, charge one being mostly harmless. That's true. Yeah. <sighs> charge that three something. Yeah, mostly. Yeah. Harmless. yeah, that is mostly harmless. Charge two, uh, extreme pain. Sticky when label. Inserting it to your, inserting it in your anus. Absolutely, you are guilty. <laughs> I, you know, I am gonna sentence it to drinking because I'm gonna agree with. Uh, with the the whole idea that um, that this is a little bit better as you drink it, I it's, it's coming up a little bit. So yeah. It's the drinking by the I, I don't think I want to throw this Tyler. up. What? I really don't want Take to throw off this up. No. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine barfing this? Yeah. No. Oh yeah. No. It's gross. Oh, no. I'm through your nose or something. It'd there. Be like it'd be like you know what? barfing oh, up a flower garden. Because we, we have had a different effect with some beers. Oh. Blueberries. Oh, blueberries. I mean, so it would be terrible. I thought you might change the label. No, no, that, that is straight blueberry burps. Wouldn't it be amazing if it changed to chocolate? Yeah, well, that's like, like that orange that beer. beer turned to orange. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. That was Willy Wonka shit. For <laughs> that was, actually. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm, I'm not. Just kill it. <laughs> kill it now. Yeah. Yeah. Kill the show. Kill it with fire. <laughs> I'm mm, not feeling it. I'm, yeah. you know, I'm going to drink it, though. Alright, let's go ahead and close the show out. Alright, thank you very much for watching Guys Games and Beer. Ooh, you can check us out at www.guysgamesandbeer.net. Uh, remember, of course, that we do indeed have a special edition of Guys Games and Beer coming up. Uh, we That's are the cranky version because this is going to be in the morning, right? Oh, yes, yeah. it's going to be the cranky morning. <laughs> we're still morning. doing beer court. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to do whiskey coffee court. <laughs> Ooh, I like that idea. I mean, just throwing it out there. You know, that's going to get you going, really. Um, you know, I still can't get off this beer. Well, Maybe suck it on the I'm harder. sorry. Well, it gets you it. I'm sorry. Can I think about this?
<laughs> we already decided to kind of realize. Times. You do kind of realize you were waiting for the end of the show as you're drinking. Yeah, but you know, I mean, uh, yeah, what's it really matter? Like, it's usually you guys holding it. Really oh, I don't know. Somebody's reaction to this is not good, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> What the Angry fuck? Face. What the fuck? Somebody evidently does not want to wait for you to finish that beer, Rob. Wrap the show up. So let's uh, let's just do something. It's fucking up. Larry, isn't it? <laughs> let's just let's just sit here Damn. while I finish this beer and ponder life. I see okay. uh, right across the screen and there's all right. So <laughs> Saturday, at 10 a.m. We've got uh, the folks behind Vindicta coming on. That's Saturday, this Saturday, 10 a.m. CST. They have got a VR game. They're, they're calling in out of Beirut. So that is a... Uh, GST a, is going international. Damn straight. Yeah. Yeah. We're just international, okay? I know. I mean... We're, we make contacts. Not Where really the it? first time. No. no. Hell. You know, we, but we're, we're getting some cool we get a, Yeah, we get a lot more Nordic countries usually. Yeah, actually we do. Surprise, a lot of yeah. Scandinavian countries. Yeah. But regardless, like oh, beer. Like, Tom. Uh, anyway. Got that old Scandinavian thing going. Anyway, uh, hope to catch you guys there. It should be a great show, I think. Uh, thank you very much uh, for Team Art you know, coming yeah, on. Yeah. I, I was just thrilled to get this. This was, uh, uh, it's hard to get our new boy developers on. I don't know why, but they are like busy people and they're all out of the country. So I really well, do well, and, and, and because they're open, yeah. so they're, they're not chilling. So it's not no, no, it's not like they're making money on this stuff. Yeah, and right. cool to hear what he's doing. Yeah, again, classic example. Trust me, you, you may see how much they've crushed this Kickstarter. Doesn't matter because they're selling the stuff cheaper than it costs. Yeah, they're not, it's they're, a labor of love. They are literally doing this because they love it's programming. A, it's a cool little love system. This. It's cheap to pick up. You yeah. definitely check it out. Yeah, yeah, Maybe. definitely. Again, we will have links on our webpage. Check it out. Rob, say goodbye. Uh, one more thing. One more thing. Uh, Facebook.com slash guys, games, and beer. Yeah, sure, he said that. Uh, yeah, he actually already said it. Yeah, yeah. Twitter. No, he did. <laughs> Before he went into the beer thing, did you? He talked about the website. <laughs> okay, never mind. Facebook. Uh, <laughs> at guys, games, <laughs> At Ice Games Beer. Wow, we fucked up. Jesus. Now you fucked up. That is best fucked up now. I ain't winning. I ain't winning this one. I'm, I'm on a losing streak. Boy. And three beers into the show. Rob is three beers into the show. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, guys. Games and Beer. We will see you Sorry. on Saturday morning. And I apologize for this extra.